Well, good evening, chat. I know it's not 4 a.m. Usually that's when we're doing a, a stream, but today it's the evening. I don't know what the fuck's going on. It's like 7 at night. I've been a sick boy the last couple of days. Sick boy the last couple of days, but somebody sent me the good word on Twitter with a little bit of, a little bit of thoughts and prayers. I've recovered enough to stream a bit. Some minor news. Apparently somebody emailed David Stay at his business email address. And uh, he watched, apparently, some of the streams and thought they were funny and is okay with coming on. So I'm going to try to get a hold of him. See if we can do an interview with David Stay. That's Mandar. <laughs> the best character in the entire show might be coming on to talk to us about what it's like to work on a kick-ass 80s TV show that should have become a worldwide sensation. So we'll see how that turns out. Now, no promises, but maybe we can get him on talk to him about the behind the scenes stuff about his kung fu werewolf movie and just all sorts of shit i think that would be pure, pretty badass we'll see if it pans out if it doesn't but that's a little photon related news also we're living under a national emergency which i think mean you know it means we can do whatever we want i don't know i'm tempted to go out and loot are we allowed to loot in a national emergency is that is that permissible because there are a lot of video games I really could use. I, am I, I'm, like, allowed to go do that, right? It's like everybody for themselves. That's how it works. That's what I understand, at least. Paint myself uh, red, run around naked with a fucking chainsaw and a shotgun. Just taking whatever I want. That's how it works in this country. Do whatever the fuck I please. It's a national emergency. Sign, sign that bill and then declare a national emergency to get more funding. Why not just not sign the bill... And just take the fucking money. I don't know. I'm not a political guy. I couldn't give you the great political analysis. But that's not even why we're here tonight. That politics shit, that's that's Ralph's territory. He can talk to you about that. No, we're here to talk about, uh, about the good word. Somebody sent me some amazing clips of a particular YouTube channel I'd never heard of before. And it reminded me of another YouTube channel from a long fucking time ago. A dude that used to run his own website even. Ted Jesus Christ God. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard of Ted Jesus Christ God, but some amazing shit. So I wanted to put together a sermonal. Is that the right word? A sermonal stream? Is that what we're going to call it? Why not? I, I think that works. I'm a heathen, so I can, I can fuck up the lingo a little bit. Nobody's going to get too up my ass on it. But I thought we'd, we'd just uh, relax, let the Holy Spirit fill us this evening, and enjoy ourselves. It's a Friday night. Why not? Church is until Sunday. We can do whatever we want. Again, it's a national emergency. So grab your shotguns and chainsaws. Let's fucking do this. Now, how is your day treating you, chat? How was work? How was school? How have things been going? A lot of hallelujahs in the chat. Well, thank you, brethren. Thank you very much. I think you're going to feel the spirit inside of you. Got a nice little selection. I'm going to take you through Ted Jesus Christ God's YouTube videos, his website, which is just phenomenal shit. We'll look at the other stuff some people sent. A little bit of uh, public access televangelism, because that's good. That used to be really popular on YouTube. A lot of funny shit got uploaded 10, 11 years ago. Kind of fell out of favor. I think everybody that did like public access and did the really crazy shit now just has their own fucking YouTube channel. They don't need public access TV anymore. They've moved on to better things, apparently. I don't know. But we'll roll with it. Fuck it. Why not? Let's see. Where do we want to start today? Let me get everything set up here. Get chat lined up. We'll go get some good stuff. Well, we could take a look at... Uh, well, I don't know how I want to segue into this, really. So we'll just... We'll pick and choose. We'll move through. Um, okay. We'll start with Ted. Ted Jesus Christ God. Let me just make sure that I've got this guy. This is really old shit. Uh, I need to find the perfect video, though. Now, he's on, like, his 18th fucking... <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ! Uh, he is on, like, his 18th account. They keep getting taken down because he goes a little too hard on his sermonals. We'll watch a few of his videos, and then I'll show you what his website looks like. Give you a really good... Give you a really good idea. Uh, hold on, let me get rid of this. I'll get rid of this. I want this to be full screen. I want you to be able to see everything. 
All right. I think we're ready. Do I have that lined up? That's good. That's good. All right. Uh, this, I believe, is his most current current channel. Again, these are all re-uploads. So if it was his original channel, he'd have a lot more views. But we've got our pick. You can take your pick of what sermon you want to listen to first. We've got 339 of 418. Ted looking regular, too. Ted is God. I don't know. That's an interesting one. We might go into that one. Or 376 of 418. Ted's long hair and full beard. Ted is God. Maybe we want to look at 333 of 418. Ted is starting up a church nine. Ted is God. You're going to have to tell me, chat, which one do you want to go for? There's quite a few uh, in the selection process here. Let's see. Ted's identity does not change. Ted is God, the creator, the Lord, the key. Well, let's take a look at this one. Hello, my name is Ted. I want to tell you, Ted and some of the hosts and many in religion out there on world earth don't see eye to eye. We do not agree. They do not like the fact that Ted took eternal life from them and now is offering a range in X-Fi, currently a maximum of up to 700 years, or rarely, I mean enormously rarely, more life up to a maximum of 37,000 years. But no more eternal life, no more immortality, no more living forever for anybody except for the one living God, the supreme being, the one, the creator. So in case you didn't catch that, uh, you're all shit out of luck. No eternal life for everybody, just for Ted. Ted is the one supreme, supreme all-living being, because Ted is God. Ted, Jesus Christ, God. The rest of you are kind of fucked. Nobody's sticking around for 37,000 years, but Ted's okay. So, sorry, rest of humanity, you're screwed. But at least we know Ted's going to stick around. So Ted wants to take uh, certain words that are strong, like uh, that were cuss words, and he's judging they're not cuss words anymore, or that were cuss phrases, or he's judging they're not cuss phrases anymore, and he wants to start using them. Why can't he use them and label certain things these strong, offensive words, or strong, offensive phrases? He can, and he did, and he is. That's what Ted is doing. This is a double-edged sword. Currently, some are rejecting Ted now because he's using these cuss words and cuss phrases and saying he can't do that. You've got to stop telling God what he can or cannot do. God can do anything God wants to do or needs to do or is, requires that, that he does. God can do basically anything. God is the judge. He defines sin and was not sin. Ted is God. That's right. Ted is God. And apparently God is homeless. A little backstory on Ted. Ted, for some reason, always ends up in homeless shelters. And yet, every homeless shelter that Ted ends up in, he is able to set up this room you're looking at with all his shit and his computer equipment and begin immediately making videos. For years at a time, Ted did this. Every time he would set up a YouTube account, he'd make like a thousand videos. He'd end up homeless again. And then he'd be back into a homeless shelter uploading another thousand videos. There's a lot of Ted Jesus Christ God out there. Luckily, somebody archives some of it. You can't tell God what he can or can't do. And if he does this, he's not God. If he does that, he's not God. If he does that sin, he's not God. You can't say that. It doesn't work. He's God no matter what he does. His identity doesn't change. He never has changed based on what he did or doesn't do. That's where you're making your big mistake, a lot of you out there. You think you can say, he's not God because he does this or that, or he talks like this or that, or he's using these words. Lane's changes. He's trying to basically use these words for good reasons. Yeah, take that, faggots. God does what he wants. Nobody tells Ted what to do. Let's see if we can find Ted Quest Company's... Oh, he made DVDs. <laughs> he made DVDs. I forgot about that. I And uh, Ted, Ted is meaner. Ted seminars. There's a lot of Ted to go through. There's a whole smorgasbord of Ted to go through. Ted is a huge meanie and is too mean too much for many. I don't know how much of a meanie is Ted. Ted has an enormous, enormously rough night. Good morning, this is Ted. Ted is God, the one God. In case you maybe forgot. Also, Ted is cloning the Lord God Almighty and angels to win. I don't know, should we hear about how Ted is cloning God so he can win? This is Ted. Yeah, I heard some of you were laughing and mocking and jeering. I think it was so funny. 
Seraph and the Ted and Michael and Gabriel and different angels that we're losing and we're going to lose. So Ted is now authorized planning of himself. Lord God Almighty, planning of Michael and planning of Gabriel and planning of specific angels. In the okay, first off, perfect music choice for God to pick. Secondly, fuck you. God doesn't need a good microphone. All right, I don't use a good microphone. I get along pretty well. Ted is using a tin can and some fucking string to spread divinity through the internet. But that fight song in the background, that techno war 80s shit, it's got my blood boiling. I want to hear more about this cloning. Original heaven. And then I tripled what Gabriel's estimate was to put maximum power on some evil earth duty. Including I can put clones of Lord God Almighty on evil earth duty. I can maneuver clones of Michael on some evil earth duty. I can maneuver clones of Gabriel on some evil earth duty. I can maneuver different angels on some evil earth duty and clones. Do you think Ted listened to that song to psych himself up for the videos? That is, that is pretty fucking horrible mic quality. And that's not because this has been re-uploaded. That's just Ted. This must have been a homeless shelter where Ted didn't have his shit going very well. YouTube 4 of 418 cover-ups. Ted is the one true God. <laughs> just, I, Ted hosts many hosts, many terrible things. It's There's so much. And it's very hard... It's very hard to pick and choose which one we're going to. Ted is the creator. Salt water fish tank. You know, because God likes to have a koi pond. It's just something God does on occasion. Streets of San Diego. Many things against Ted. Ted is God. Oh, here's an outdoors one. Ted, and I'm uh, trying to tell you, um, you know, for years now, I have been, for an additional 12 years, I've been religiously persecuted terribly and re religiously persecuted. I've had my... US Clearly, Satan is against him. Every time Ted tries to spe uh, spread the good news, the devil has to interfere and fuck his audio quality up. Luckily, we can read his written word on his amazing website. And his website, I kid you not, is tedisthewonegod.net. I've got an archive of this site because I don't dare go onto it. <laughs> Just naked. Because who fucking knows? But let's take a look at Ted's website and uh, just let's see what his website looks like. I think you're going to really enjoy this. It's a, a, a journey into God's mind. Uh, here we go. We've got an apocalyptic background. If Ted vanishes, in case you're curious, what to do if he disappears? Uh, on the internet is his address location, in case you're curious. If you want to find Ted, he's on the internet at tedistheonegod.net. And the uh, he gives hours when he's available. Seven days a week, 24-7. God never rests. On the internet, never closed and constantly open. We are open to the public and public domain to open content for content and open source for software. With, the, with some things closed for sale, including publishing and production and software. Full desolation plus needs to be done. This is very recent, from February 12th of this year. This is uh, his background banner. It's very nice. Ted is the one and only and complete the creator and God and Lord and King. And I am of, and I am and or range of Teed, of Talaxy and Tuniverse, infinite all directions. In case you're curious, that's his holy weapon. This happens to be some of how should look many swords of Ted. Except no silver. Two blue maximum royal blue of Ted. Ted. Needs to understand it so many are trying to do many swords of Ted. Into Talaxy now. I don't know, should we read on? I think we should read on. Latest greatest bundle file now. This is in case you want to, uh, <laughs> if you want to download Ted, there's some Ted to download bundle file of table of contents <laughs> after a complete forgiveness and pardon and acceptance of all apologies by Ted requirements to keep it in 30 days or less are now to keep it have to do all requirements within 30 days and nights to keep it what are now worship Ted and prayer position on knees on <laughs> on a pillow with hands clasped 
verbalize three times, I worship you, Ted. Shall we do that, chat? Should we all get on our knees? Put a pillow, uh, you know, obviously you need to be comfortable. Clasp your hands and repeat after me. I worship you, Ted. I worship you, Ted. I worship you, Ted. Then on knees with hands and arms out, a low bowing position, verbalize three times, I worship you, Ted. Then to on shin legs, then on a rug, air, exercise mat, er, can be carpet on floor with then hands out to on floor, verbalize three times, I worship you, Ted. Then do atonement to Ted. Do restoration to Ted. Pay Ted what you owe Ted, including all ties and offerings and donations. You are going to pay what you owe. Ted wants some fucking money. God needs some cash. The bus is not cheap. Tithe now, <laughs> tithe now has now for sure has to be 20%, where best 10 directly has to be to Ted. The next 10% for religion and our thing of worship, and or what happens to be called a Teddy and things fur. Then do a plan for Ted and you and family. Then a list of what you are to change at least 10 points from maximum to less. <laughs> then do a to-do list for Ted. What to do for Ted? A full immersion baptism, except if you are too young to hold breath in a shower, to sprinkling baptism. How to be unpossessed? Well, if you've got the devil in you, Ted's going to help you out. Verbalize alone, loud enough three times. If Ted is the creator and God of me, er I, er name of, please unpossess me. So uh, the mantra here is, if Ted is the creator and God of me, er I, er name of, please unpossess me. If for sure can be what does possess, never even infirms any to take control and even trick to feel was then attempt to deceive so much. My brain feels like it's melting. That must be the devil inside of me. Hopefully, if we read on, Ted will fix us. Therefore, we need other methods to unpossess people. How can we verify an unpossession? Don't any methods now. We need controlled people to help to be there with possessed people so we can spiritually at least verify. Did it? Then legally can argue it. Because we for sure by now cannot even trust those what do tricks and are tricky. And are such liars to so liars to liars and deceivers. Doing so much deception did where are not of slightest typically even to tell any it happened or was done a try to be unpossessed. I think that makes perfect sense, really, if you just think about it. If too possessed. By the way, are you looking at the scroll bar? Okay, this is the main page. Look at where we are right now. Sit back and enjoy. We're going to be getting a whole religious lesson. We're right here. We're right here. Scroll bar goes all the way down to here. If too possessed in a hell evil earth leader with nukes, you need to do this now of. Pray to Ted. Using name of Ted. Understanding it happens to be this Ted. What to use name of Ted? Solomon Moore. Pray for a complete forgiveness and pardon and acceptance of all apologies from Ted. If you pray many and are to receive it, if somewhat qualify enough for it or in any position to do, a to some to many favors for Ted. Then you have it for three weeks, where then you have to do things to keep it of. Worship Ted. How supposed to? Have a private it big bathtub. <laughs> Just have a private it big bathtub. Ross would love this religion. Have a private it big bathtub. Or it can be a spa. Or it can be a swimming pool. Full immersion baptism. Do full restoration and atonement and paying what you owe to Ted. Including ties of 20%. Where best 10% has to be Ted. In English, this is English. This is the language of God. It's not Hebrew, all right? The Jews lied to you. This is the word of God. Yahweh himself, or, or as he likes to be called, Ted. Let's uh, scroll down. Oh, oh, we're into judgment. Uh-oh. Ted, now has done a final judgment concerning all people humans of earth during a coming of alive from year of 2000 plus of. This might be important. All are to be after if a resurrection to put down after from in deep under surface things to submarine docks with wearing clothes and other things. Almost are to have from Ted. There only a backpack and sleeping bag and tent and water bottle and other great and supplies and one thousand dollars cash. Nothing else from Ted. You are to you are to on own with rare exceptions. Not how much upgrade of brains and bodies and other things Ted was to do. If not in a Teddian religion. Er, 
starting up a Teddy in religion. Then you have to pay all ties to Ted. Based on snapshot of net where he wants, I think Ted is asking you to give him a statement. A, he wants your fucking bank statement. A snapshot of net worth of all things you own and control and hold and other things. 10% best of. That's a bargain, really. So the homeless man, oh, well, I'm sorry, the homeless god, wants you to send him screenshots of your bank account so he can calculate how much money you owe him. Because <laughs> he needs to buy sleeping tents. If nothing else, send email to arrange how to pay to God. You have 90 days and nights to do so, other than you are caught in this final judgment. Well, act now while time time is limited. Supplies are limited. If you get a hold of God immediately, he might be able to save you from damnation. You can reach him at this email address. But if you don't send that fucking money in 90 days, I think you're going to hell. Oh my god. Ted, for sure so much now, needs enough financial help in and on and around hell evil earth. I could not in about 20 years again start up anything much enough to take off enough to even support Ted. I need a day job to career now because none have even helped enough Ted. We think you are never even again to obtain any money from any much. Wow. Problems for Ted. Oh, Ted has some legal problems. Apparently, God's getting hassled by the man. There's a legal footer. We'll take a look at that later on. Uh, there's, Wow. Ted now has a bundle file to download. It's only 36 gigabytes. Okay, well, let's, let's, let's try to work this out in our minds. What do you think the normal size of this text page would be? Now, imagine this, and it, there are 36 gigabytes of it. Ted has written 36 gigabytes worth of his Holy Bible. We've read a little bit here. <laughs> How many pages do you think that is? Because here's the download link if you want the holy word. Try to download all bundle files now where it happened to be in reverse chronological order. Too, like so many things of Ted. Therefore, first page happens to have latest page now. Table of contents. Ted, about 39, hu <laughs> about 39 years old, a people human male during a coming now. Come on. <laughs> Oh, I like God. God's cool with it. He's got 36 gigabytes for you to download. He only wants 10% of your wealth. Make sure to send that bank screenshot. And here's a, here's a little something for you. Why don't you get on your knees and worship? Ted doesn't mind. God doesn't mind taking off his shirt. He knows what you want to see. A little bit of hairy divinity. A little, a little, a little bit of the Tedster. All right, that's supposed to uh, a little divine inspiration. Now, maybe if you pay that tithe at 20%, he'll take his pants off, too. I don't know how this religion works, but there you go. Many females of a people are yours, Ted, and you, Ted, never of slightest mine or any theirs because I, Ted, own Ted, completely 100% totally. Nothing else, not even a tiny fraction, even a range of a wife. <laughs> Ted has to own self 100% and cannot do anything else. Therefore, what, Ted? Owns to owns, 100% too. Therefore, none even to claim owns some of Ted. Therefore, anything, even a tiny fraction, what exclusively owns Ted. I, many females of a people of Ted, and yours, Ted, and you, Ted, are never mine of many. <laughs> I just, I, uh, I, I'm trying to wrap my, uh, can somebody, do we have any prophets in the audience? Can you help me, help me translate that? Is he looking for a girlfriend? Is that what we're hearing here? Or is he saying that he's celibate? Oh, lots of girl. Oh, here we go. All right. It for sure happens for sure now to be about love of Ted and females of people for sure not now of slightest like a father to and to oh daddy. Hope not to daddy to even a dad. <sighs> Sounds like something right out of Genesis. Let me read that again. It for sure happens for sure now to be about love of Ted and females. Of people for sure, not of slightest like a father to and to oh daddy. How hope not to daddy to even a dad. Ted, ha <laughs> Ted happens to not be phasing out at all. Angels and Angelus and Angelos and spiritual and non spiritual males and men and man and guys and dudes and other things yet called yet have to be living parallel transfer upgrades. Resurrections where are to be vast variety of people. 
<laughs> There's just so much. There's so much. Ted the one god, listen, name of Ted. Heaven now gender secured. Heaven is now gender secured. No girls allowed. Heaven is now gender secured for Ted and females of a people of Ted. Brian Adams has made it into heaven. Heaven Acoustic Live. So if I'm if I'm listening to this right, Ted's heaven is full of Ted, a bunch of thoughts, and Brian Adams. Brian Adams has made it into Ted's heaven, even though it's gender secured. Everybody else is fucked. All the ladies and Brian Adams, though, welcome to heaven. And ladies, if you want to know how to please God, here's some sexy images of what he likes. Make sure to pretty yourselves up. Nice physique, good dresses. We need some enough for sure to carry forward to try to obtain all free by now an open source license of TED. Free enough for copy and use and other things, many now possible. About now 300 plus gigabytes of bundle files. Wow, we've gone down about, mm, I'd say, three or four pages, and it's gone from 36 gigabytes of TED to 300 plus gigabytes of TED. That's a tenfold jump of TED content. If you want 300 gigabytes of this religious writing, talking about what kind of ladies he wants in heaven, here's your download. Some very impertinent information about music now. Oh, I guess Ted likes the. We think some music happens to be so evil, at least with images from YouTube from on internet. Yet we agree, Ted. You can somewhat fix it with logo. Another, no other images. To start, if lyrics are range of teed, enough yet so many are in different languages. Oh, lots of, lots of, oh, here it is. Here's our update. This is today's update. It only took us eight fucking pages of text. Ted understands it now. If people of humans do not, do not do a full desolation plus by end of coming, it happens to be so possible. Use many people of humans lose. Ted and... Ted needs enough reliable options for nukes, for space furcies, and air furcies, and submarine furcies. Too many nukes. Apparently, Ted's militia, uh, which is comprised of the space furces, the air furces, and the submarine furces, have too many fucking nukes. It needs to be Ted, and people of Ted. Then Bush and Cheney and people of then Obama and Obama's people, at least in USA, doing nukes in Silicon Valley and San Diego. Ted, Ted wants to nuke. Ted wants to nuke California. God himself wants to destroy California with his space forces and his nuclear weapons. Phases of possession. Ted has been phases of possessed entire coming and recently was a while, possibly 72 hours to longer. If you study into future, some are to be able to see phases of possessions of Ted. Start of middle content, end of middle content, footer. We need some enough for to sure to carry forward to have try to obtain all free by now in open source license of Ted. Multi-gigabyte site. For sure, Ted happens to be so far behind in doing so many multi-gigabyte sites. Oh, why such large font now? Many use phones... <laughs> What seems to like to use in a vertical, not horizontal, orientation. Therefore, with phones, now it seems... Was this written by Josh? With all the errs in here? Horizontal orientation. Therefore, with phones, now it seems this is about correct. Where on phones, to pads, to tablets, to netbooks, and ultrabooks, to large screens, what are horizontal? Like notebook, computers, to desktop... I can't... This is... My brain is getting fucked up reading this. I'll tell you that right now. Oh, oh, and somebody's asking, what language is this? Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. Here we go. English of Ted. Oh, boy. Oh, I'm going to need a drink for this. For, e for easy to remember and think and say and to verbalize and to write and again to remember and to communicate via audio and or sound and or via verbally and or via or visually or film, to photo paper, to analog tape, to video digital, to production digital, to multimedia productions. Jesus. This happens to be written in English of Ted. No other English what happens to be too bad and too wicked and too evil, including so much sodomy innuendo, and evil innuendo, and tainting, including dog. What happened to be 
etiology from evil of turning around name of God and calling it dog. Any canine what Ted calls? Canineness, not dogs. Never. Using dog. And many other things done in English. So many by now have criticized now Ted. To be insane, or crazy, or wacko, or seriously mentally ill. <laughs> or did too many drugs like so many LSD had to have have done. And or other drugs and or a genetics problem with brains and family. And or other things due to first called Ted's English to now called English of Ted. And <laughs> I think what he's saying is uh, regular English is evil and wicked. Because you can say dog in it, which is a reversal of God. And so Ted has created his own variant of English to remove all canines, or as he calls it, canineness. English is perverse because of canineness. Well, wow, it's good to it's good to know. Oh, there's a he's got his own copyright too. 2018 er copyright by Ted. Ted Solomon, more Ted Ralph Kurtz, all trademarks. And that's just uh that's just the first page. Okay, that's that's one page on Ted's website. Ted has multiple pages on Ted's website about what to do if he disappears. Let's leave it on that sexy picture. What to do if he disappears. How you can send money to him and screenshots of your bank account. Uh, where ladies can get in contact with Ted. Because remember, if you're a chick, you're getting into heaven. Or if you're Brian Adams. If you got a pussy or you're Brian Adams, you're getting into heaven. Everybody else, you're fucked. But Ted, you know, he's like, hey, ladies, hit me up. Hit me up. Send me some money. Let's get this shit going. Uh, he's got a music library, 300 and 300 plus gigabytes of Ted content for download. It's a bargain. He's not even charging for it. All he wants is a tithe. Just a fucking tithe. On the internet, 24-7. 24-7 in Silicon Valley. He's ready to nuke it. And he's going to be ready to nuke it. As he awaits him. <laughs> yeah, this dude's been around forever. I mean, forever. I, I remember finding him years ago. And he's still around and kicking. Like, he's still doing his thing. He's still doing TED videos. Still uploading to his website. Still putting out DVDs. He makes DVDs of himself singing and talking to people on the streets. And uh, he's a fucking busy guy. Like, ten years of it. Never quits. Never, never gets tired. Ted is always doing things. Why red text? Uh, well, he wants you to be able to really, he wants it to pop. You know, you want it to pop. Pop off the page. Pop. Uh, let's see. I saw a few superberries. Let me read them. I won't be any, I won't be reading any heathenist superberries. Okay. All right. This is a divine, a divine chat. From Joey Jojo 89 the Raccoon City Mayor's daughter has a fat ass. I like the new Resident Evil 2 DLC. From Deja Vu Woo. Ted Talks Gospel by Pastor Charles Manson. The vile delinquent just got in. The fuck are we talking about? Loving these streams that remind me of Nurkish's cringe cast, except with less making fun of retarded children. Also, watch this. Some 87. Just got here. Is this another stream about a furry big gay bear? The Vapist. Ted is God and Kitty Styles died for his and our sins. Caleb LL Show. I'm not drunk enough for this Ted stuff. Thanks for streaming, though, Jimbo. Get healthy and be cured of Jade's MK-11, Revan and AIDS. Reused. Ted reminds me of a Soviet commander in Red Alert 2. From Mittens 319. I love you, Papa Jim. I think you will love this a lot. It's a guy who sexualizes veganism. <clears throat> From Russia with love. We will take a look at that when we get a chance. Guns down and hail. Tell Ted, the true God, if he can nuke Israel. Excuse me. I had a little bit of a... Uh, I think I'm getting possessed like Ted was. I burped a little bit there. From Senator Hitler. Sir, this is SBCC's time slot. The least you could do is play this video. Constantine's commentary. Hey, Jim, I threw together something. Maybe a new intro video. I will take a look at that. The greedy gabbler. Oh, evade, Jim. Did you forget the kosher light switches? That sounds vaguely familiar. Two more here and we'll get back to some more divinity. Mr. Curie. Don't have to read. <laughs> okay, well, uh, the price of a rose for you on a belated Valentine's Day. Uh, thank you. And finally from Ronick. Hey, Jimbo, back when I was in the Scouts, our leaders thought it would be smart to show us a video on how not to get molested. Let me just say, 
This could have, could have been more subtle with the demonstrations. Okay, well, you can't... There's like 19 video links people sent, but a scout video about how not to get molested? Does it? Is the video just 10 seconds long and says, don't join the Boy Scouts? Is that, is that the fucking video? Oh, let me see. What the fuck is this? This is a 30-minute video on how not to get molested at the Boy Scouts. Chat, should we watch this? I, I'm torn. Do we want to learn about Ted Jesus Christ God, or do we want to find out how not to get fucked by our Scoutmaster? I mean, both are pretty much fucking amazing, really, when you think about it. I'm going to put this to a vote. I'm going to let the people decide. Uh, what <laughs> What are we watching? Uh, Scout <laughs> Scoutmasters? Molestation? <laughs> or... Ted's Wild Ride. We can watch both, but what are we gonna what are we gonna watch first? Okay, let's let's let that vote for a second, and uh, we'll see where to go. Uh, a time to tell. Welcome to the Boy Scouts. Lesson number one: Don't touch a penis. If your scoutmaster pulls his penis out, quit the scouts and get another hobby. This has been how not to be molested in the Boy Scouts. All right, let's let's see where the votes are so far. A lot of people really want that. <laughs> a lot of people really want to find out how not to get raped by a scoutmaster. <laughs> okay, I'll give it another minute, and then uh, already judging by the votes, Ted's gonna have to take a back seat to getting fucked by a boy scout leader. Okay, let's let's see where we're sitting here. Yeah, it's pretty solidly in the favor of Scoutmaster molestation. Apparently, people really want those pro tips on how not to get fucked in the woods. <laughs> I guess I guess a lot of Eagle Scouts in chat. Three oh eight three ten. Yeah, it's a, I think it's a clear definitive winner. Chat wants to find out about Scout Scoutmaster molestation. All right. Uh, I mean, we can do that. We can do that. Take a break from our religious, uh, <laughs> religious viewing, and uh, check out this uh, video. It's a long one, chat. It's 34 minutes. It's called "A Time to Tell." So let's uh, everybody grab a notepad. You're going to want to write this down. All right, it's going to be real important on how not to get fucked in the ass in the woods by a scoutmaster. So let's uh, let's take a look. I've got a little opener here. Presenter's orientation to be viewed by adult leaders of youth groups prior to screening. <laughs> they want to give them a heads up. Like, hey, I, that that's actually really insidious. Okay, we're going to give you this video uh, telling kids how not to get molested. But before they watch it, we want you to watch it alone so you can adjust tactics. You're going to find <laughs> scoutmasters, really. You're going to need to find new techniques. So watch this video because the kids are going to be aware of what you're trying. You're going to have to think outside the box. All right, if this is quoting something from 19... How old is this? 1985? I bet you it's around that. So this is the 80s, early 90s. This is really text heavy in the beginning, isn't it? All right, looks like it's about to start. The Boy Scouts of America would like to thank you for your interest as a presenter of this film, A Time to Tell. You might feel uncomfortable in presenting this subject to an 11 to 14 year old adolescent male audience for which it is intended. However, 
It is because of the unique physical and psychological changes young men experience in adolescence that the subject of sexual molestation should be directly addressed. Broaching the subject of sexual molestation is not an easy task. But the problem of sexual abuse is too great a reality in America to be ignored. One in seven men will be sexually molested before the age of 21. How much do you want to bet this dude doesn't have any pants on and there's a Cub Scout under that desk? I'm just, I'm throwing it out there. It's, it's like, why would the Boy Scouts make this video? What? Of all the organizations, it would be like a how not to get molested video put together by Catholic priests. The term for a person who prefers children as sexual objects is a pedophile. The term pedophile or child molester is generally used interchangeably. Molesters come from all walks of life. The dirty old man in the trench coat is simply a myth. The abuser may be an adolescent as well as an adult. The child molester is generally known to the child and the child's family. He may even be a scoutmaster. Why, let's hypothetically say he's sitting right next to you out in the woods as you gather <laughs> as you gather trees and shit for a fire. He might be a scout leader, hypothetically speaking, and you hypothetically shouldn't fall asleep next to him, hypothetically. According to a report entitled Child Molesters, a Behavioral Analysis, published by the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children in cooperation with the FBI, Pedophiles are frequently the nice guy in the neighborhood who likes to entertain children after school or take them on day or weekend trips. A pedophile knows how to talk to young people and how to listen to them. In fact, he may relate to young people better than adults. He seduces his victims by being attentive, giving them gifts, sometimes treating them better than their own parents do. Sadly, he often targets adolescents who are already victims of emotional loss or physical neglect. He uses his status as an adult and an authority figure to seduce and later control his victim. It is our responsibility as citizens to educate our young people concerning the recognition of potential molestation, the resistance to seduction. <laughs> this is some legitimately heavy shit. <laughs> well, you join the Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts and Eagle Scouts and shit to learn how to, like, build fucking fires and shit and how to fish and make tents. Can you imagine sitting around with, like, 80 other kids as this guy talks about getting raped? <laughs> like, what the fuck? I came here to do, like, a, a soapbox derby. Now listen to this dude in a suit talk about me getting fondled. His message to the young people of our society. Education concerning this social ill is the first step towards substantially reducing the problem. A Time to Tell is a dramatization of three incidences of attempted molestation. Holy shit, these really are living examples. All right, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit more. This guy is he's so dry. I, let's just skip to the examples. Oh, 1989, I was right. So, late 80s, early 90s. Hey, Carlos! Jeff, wait up! Hi, how you doing? Guys, she's crazy about me. <laughs> yeah. I can tell. Hey, whatever happened to your friend? What friend? That high school kid with the red convertible. Man, that was the coolest car, yeah. man. It's it's a long story. I don't I don't want to talk about the convertible rides with the high school boy. What do you what do you mean, man? I mean, he he took you out on a drive into the woods and stuff. Wasn't it fun? It was an awesome car. I don't you know. I had trouble walking for like a week after I went in the woods with the high school guy. I don't want to talk about it. Hey, talk about stories. Did you hear Gary's parents were getting a divorce? No. No, what happened? His stepfather started acting weird. What do you mean weird? Well, the way I heard it. Uh, Gary, is the popcorn done yet? The game's already started. 
Son, bring Daddy the popcorn. We've got a game to watch. Don't worry about Daddy, son. He's got his shirt wide open. It's time to watch the game. Bring the popcorn. I can already see where this is headed. Oh, Here you go. Oh, thanks. This is fun. Yeah. Just us guys batching it up while your mother's away on a business trip. Tell me, kiddo, you ever get really drunk? You know, just us guys alone in the house, your stepdad and you. Why did you try drinking what I call goofy juice? It's a little bit of wine and whiskey. We're going to have great fun tonight. Now put the blindfold on. Oh, come on. The ref is blind. What a game. Can you believe Smooth move, Dad. <laughs> That's not obvious as fuck. By the way, this is a retelling of Donga's childhood. We're, we're watching a pre-wheelchair Donga. You know, Gary, I think we've really been getting to know each other lately. It's been fun. My dad and I used to do a lot of stuff together before he died. He left really big shoes to fill. I'm sorry I didn't know him. He sounds like he was a great guy. Yeah, I still miss him a lot. Well, you've really had to be a man since he's been gone. And I think you deserve the little surprise I have for you. Don't do it, kid. Don't listen to stepdaddy. All right, that surprise is not going to be pleasant. Run. Run out the front door right now. Stepdaddy's got his shirt off and he's drinking and your mom's nowhere in sight. Run for your fucking life. You would have time. All right, guys. Way to go! All right. What's the surprise? Well, if I told you, it wouldn't be a surprise. Here we are at halftime. Holy fucking shit. How dark is this going to get? Can I even show this? <laughs> this is up on YouTube. I don't know how deep the Scoutmasters or the fucking Boy Scouts went with their molestation video. But I got bad feelings about where this is headed. I got real bad fucking feelings about what the surprise is going to turn out to be. It's halftime. What's my surprise? <laughs> you know, Gary, I said you'd been a man since your father's death. Helping your mom and accepting me. Yeah. Well, I remember what it was like to be your age. I wanted to know what it was like to be a real man. You know, sex and that kind of thing. I thought you might be interested in a little sex education, too, so... Why don't you stick your head under the blanket so I can educate you? Run, kid. Run for the fucking door while you still can. What's the surprise, Daddy? Well, you can measure the surprise in inches, Gary. <laughs> Why don't you look under the blanket and count how many inches the surprise is? I rented this videotape. It'll show you everything you wanted to know. We can watch it together so I can answer your questions. How's that? Sounds okay, I guess. Uh, I, I noticed a uh, comment in chat saying the surprise is the kid raped the dad. There actually is a video that's on YouTube about a son. It's a 30-minute video about a son that rapes his father from the age of 12 onward. I'm not making it up. It's not a comedy video. It's an actual video about a kid raping his father repeatedly. And weirder still, it's a black family. We can watch that after this if you'd like. Mm, gosh, look at that. Looks like fun, doesn't it? With your mom going, I know how it makes me feel. <laughs> oh, um, we better not tell your mom about this videotape. She, uh, <laughs> she, she would not understand. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> what do you think about that? If your mom were here, she'd have me rubbing her back. Would you like me to do it for you? 
And this is where Gary realized things were about to get dark. <laughs> get, the smile faded instantly. Look at him. It instant. I think it's finally uh, exploded in his mind what's about to happen. He was confused for a minute there, but when Daddy said that, he realized, uh-oh, this is a no-no naughty touch situation. Uh, I, I guess it would be okay. Doesn't that feel good? Holy shit, Boy Scouts, what the fuck are you making? <laughs> Does that feel good? Look at his face. I think I want to puke. That's a face that says, I want to vomit. It feels good, but... Hey! Stop! No! Why are you doing this? <laughs> Did he just slap his ass? What the fuck was that? Doesn't that feel good? It feels good, but... Hey! Oh, Daddy's trying to take him to fucking Ram Ranch. Stop! No! Why are you doing this? Gary, I'm sorry. I just thought you wanted to feel really good. That's sick! And I trusted you! How could you slap my ass? None of us suspected it. That's right. He tried to pull Gary's pants down. Oh, Mom, I couldn't believe it either. I didn't know my baby boy is such a fag. <laughs> Gary's standing right there. Do you believe it, Mom? He tried to fuck my boyfriend. I can't believe he's such a little queer. We're sending him to military school next week. We'll never see Gary again. Trying to seduce my son while I was out of town? <laughs> the nerve! Of course. Sure, Gary asked me to let you know what was going on. The attorney said in about two months. Yeah, I, d I just filed today. What else could I do? He refused to get help. No. Huh. You're right. I'll never let it happen again. Five times is too many. You know, the first four guys that molested Gary, I thought, maybe it's just a coincidence. But after this last time, I'm starting to think I have horrible taste in men. I don't know, what do you think, Mom? Should I, should I stop looking for dates on the sex offender registry? Maybe that was my problem. Thank goodness Gary recognized what was happening and knew enough to resist him and get out of there. Uh-huh. He was over at the hunts when I got home. There's no telling what he would have done. Well, anyway, the lady from social services came out to talk to him. To make sure Gary didn't blame himself, and to make sure he knew it was his stepfather's fault. Yeah, that's exactly what Gary said. He feels better now. That's the strangest story. Not really. It happens in the families a lot, especially if, say, an uncle or a stepfather doesn't think the kid knows anything about how my parents would say it, the birds and the bees. <laughs> It's so much easier to say sex. Yeah. Who told you? My doctor, when I finally asked him, he said, at this age, it's only normal for a young man to start getting curious. <laughs> I didn't have the nerve to tell him I've been thinking about it for a long time. <laughs> How about you? Uh, they talked about it in a class at my old school. My friends told me, but when I talked to my dad, I found out half the things they said weren't true. Hey. How do you know so much about this other stuff? What other stuff? Molesters? Yeah. Yeah, Jamal, how are you such an expert on getting raped? Why don't you tell us the secret on that? Uh-oh. I think Jamal might have overshared with his new friends. Yeah, Jamal, when I think about it, every time we get together, you always are constantly talking about child molestation. It's a little weird. Like yesterday, when we were talking about the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and you told me, hey, Sometimes uncles touch you in the wrong or inappropriate way. You should tell a you should tell an adult. I thought that was really bizarre, man. Like, why do you always bring it up? Cause it was this guy I once knew, a friend of the family. He played ball with my dad in school. Hey, David. Hey, uh, uh Jeff. You remember my buddies Tom and, and Joey? <laughs> sure. You got your all the time. Yeah, almost. Hey, let's go play this one over here. Okay. Hey, well, Jeff, now which one you gonna beat me on tonight? Huh? <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, right. I'm telling you, now you need to lighten up. 
You like video games, don't you, Jamal? Well, reach your hand in my pocket. I got a bunch of quarters in there. You want to play some Pac-Man? Just reach on in there. Oh, I need to win every once in a while. <laughs> hey, how about a couple of sodas, man, to get the juices flowing? This sounds great to me. All right, well, look. Hey, I'll be right back. Here you go, Bubba. Are you cool, man? Come on, do it again. I missed it. Do it again. All right. All right. Mm. All right. Come on, Joe. You can do better than that, man. All right. Yeah, yeah, All right. Way to go, man. You mean patting you on the butt like a football player? Not exactly. More like I'm starting to notice a theme. <laughs> Every one of these molestation stories so far has involved boys getting their asses slapped. <laughs> Is this that like a substitute for what uh, what's really happening out with those scoutmasters in the woods? But... The Boy Scouts of America doesn't want to graphically explain the sodomy that's happening <laughs> to those poor innocent Boy Scouts by their Scoutmasters? By grabbing my butt. Thinking back, I guess I should have stopped it there. Man, I would have told that guy to get lost. But I knew David. He'd been in front of my parents ever since I could remember. Ever wonder why a guy that age would be hanging around a bunch of kids? That should have been my first clue. Something was strange. Hey, man, let me talk to you how to play golf. <laughs> my Uncle Louie. <laughs> hey, David, it's 10 o'clock. We got to split. Yeah, OK. All right. <laughs> Yo, man, I got to go, too. Hey, Jeff, how would you like to make some extra money, huh? <laughs> sure, doing what? Cleaning out my attic next time? Oh, dude, no. OK, listen. Jamal, I'm going to give you some life advice here. Anytime a... Uh, Bill Cosby-looking motherfucker hits you up at the arcade and says he wants you to clean his attic out. His attic? All right, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's secret speak for his asshole. All right, run. Run for the door. You learned what happened to the other boy that got his ass slapped. Fucking run. Yeah. Man, it's hot up here. Yeah. Hey, Jeff, why don't you take off your shirt, man? Good idea, man. Sure is hot up here, Jamal. You know how I like to cool down? I like to rub butter all over myself. Why don't you grab that vat of butter over on the table? Butter each other up. Nothing homosexual about that. Up in the attic together, shirtless, covered in butter. Just two good dudes cleaning an attic out, all slipping and sliding with some butter on us. T totally not weird. Don't tell your parents, though. Don't ever tell your parents about the butter attic. Bet that feels better, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm going to go get us something cold to drink, huh? All right. Here you go. You deserve it, huh? No thanks. I better not. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Jeff. It's the only thing I had in the fridge. No problem. At least I can draw you back. Yeah. Feels good. <laughs> what the fuck is with this? <laughs> this PSA is so bizarre. Shit, this is weird. Mm -hmm. I never realized how many muscles you have, man. You been working out? <laughs> yeah, with all these. <laughs> it's kind of a hot and sweaty job, huh? <laughs> yeah, kind of. Yeah. And we're finished up here. Why don't we both get cleaned up a bit and we'll go out for some pizza, huh? Okay. You can shower first. David? Oh, David's going right for it. No subtlety here. Why don't you jump in the shower, Jamal? No, no, trust me. You go get cleaned up. Don't worry about it. I'm just going to get butt naked. Butt naked and buttered up. And I'll join you. Yeah. What do you need? I thought you might have room for one more. Hey, man, get out of here. That's not for me. Yeah, okay, sure, man. Whatever you say. Man, talk about crazy. Get me out of here. You 
forgot something, man. Thanks. Hey, hey Tef, maybe that didn't come out right, man. Oh, here. I didn't even get a chance to pay you, huh? Just forget man, it. Man, come on, now. Let me make it up to you. But keep this between you and me, huh? Don't, don't tell your folks, all right? Keep it. Just keep it. Oh, so you're gonna be that way, huh? Fine. You know, it was really your fault, Jeff. You little slut, Jamal. All right, it's your fault. I asked you to clean my attic out, and you took your shirt off, and you made me butter you up. All right, you made me do it. That's rape, Jamal. You raped me in my house. I wanted you to clean the attic up, and you made me get in that shower with you. I'm telling your dad. You hear that, Jamal? I'm telling your dad what a little slut you are. Besides, it's your word against mine. Who do you really think they're going to believe, huh? You, the kid, or me, the adult? You think about it. My fault. Jeff, could you pass the beans, please? Oh, sure. Wonder if they would blame me. After now, Jamal. <laughs> Jamal, Jeff was telling us about uh, the attic incident. Apparently, you tried to molest him. We're sending you to military school. All right, that's just, it's wrong. What's wrong with you? He asked you to clean his attic out. We're so disappointed. After all, he is their friend. Well, you don't seem to be real hungry for a guy who's been working hard all afternoon. <laughs> I guess not. Mom, would you believe me? Susie and I want to make lots of money selling lemonade tomorrow. If he tried it on me, who's next? I mean, for their sakes, somebody should know. Who was that on the phone a while ago? That was Mr. Richardson. The guy who swears he's innocent. If it was so innocent, why did he make such a big deal about keeping he it a secret? To out of court. Oh, the guy's obviously guilty. That's right. It's not my fault. It's his fault. And I'm telling. That's right. Jeff? Are you all right? That's right. I'm telling. I gotta hear that again. That's right. Are you all right? That's right. I'm telling. Telling what? 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 Your dad reported his friend to the police? He sure did. What did they say? You see, um, child molesters can be anybody. And they usually are a friend or relative who uses things like special attention, toys, money video games, even pets, to get kids like you to do things that just aren't right. And it's, it's a gradual process, perhaps beginning with just innocent touching, that becomes increasingly personal as time goes on. And then afterwards, they, they try to force you to keep their little secret. Occasionally, it gets a little more extreme. Allow me, the peace officer, to graphically explain to you sodomy in front of your parents, Jamal. See, there's something we like to call <laughs> stinky fingers. Let me explain how this works, Jamal. A man takes his fingers, he butters them up and inserts them into your asshole. Do you know what a finger up the asshole looks like, Jamal? Would, would you like me to demonstrate in front of your father? Why don't you have your mother hold your pants while I demonstrate the molestation technique that these pedophiles use? By using guilt threats. And then he read your rights. Right, but how'd you know? You mean like a criminal? No, there are such things as the rights kids have if someone tries to molest them. You have the right to control your own body. If you ever feel uncomfortable, say someone is touching you a lot or in places where they shouldn't, well, you as a kid can stop it. I mean, even rudely. Run, scream, make a scene, do anything, and then get help. Come in. Can't sleep? Not yet. You know the weirdest thing about this? That other video I talked about where the, the son rapes the father for like 20 years straight? It, it looks like the same actors. So I almost, I almost wonder if they went on to make this other fucking documentary, uh, per, a public service announcement video. We'll watch that one again after this. David, it was terrible. I'm sure it was. But nothing is so bad that you can't tell me about it. 
Remember that. Thanks, Dad. But what if he hadn't listened? Why would have kept telling until somebody listened? A friend, a relative, anybody. Even your mom? Sure. Why not? Well, I just never think of talking to moms about that sort of thing. It's amazing how much they understand. Yeah. How do you know? Uh... <laughs> yeah! You know, it's really weird that this group of friends have all been molested. I mean, what are the odds? What are the odds that every one of them has a story about molestation? <laughs> Is this like some after-school club? Oh, that's right, it's called the Boy Scouts. Oh, you guys want a Coke? You're not trying to pull something, are you? Shut up. <laughs> Come on. A long walk, this soda really hits the spot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, Bobby. What can I get for you? Oh, I'll have a root beer. Here you go. Thank you. What's his problem? He thought he knew me. Oh, is that why he didn't speak? <laughs> That's not what I mean. Hey, Carlos, man, what's happening? Nothing much, just hanging out. Maybe you could use a little excitement. Sure, like what? The club's getting together this afternoon. How would you like to go and meet some of the guys? Uh, far out! Great, meet me out front after school. Hey, Tony, this is Carlos. Get out on you, Bob? He's cool. Give me five. Hey, man. Hey, Bobby. You guys going to the ball game Saturday? Sure. I thought we'd check out the movies afterwards. I'm game. You want to come? Nah, I'm broke. Hey, who needs money? Tony Springs for it all. Yeah! Tony, I'm getting some bad vibes about. Why is this dude why does this dude have a Corvette full of fucking young boys? What do you think? You think anybody at school notices that? You think any of the teachers look out the window and are like, why is that a uh, young adult man who looks like he's in college taking half of our eighth grade with him on a car trip to the woods? So? His friends travel a lot. Does he like that? Are you kidding? It's a perfect setup. Hey, you guys, you know the rules. I don't pay for any torn or sweaty clothes. If you're going to wrestle, you have to take them off. You guys know the rules. Everybody gets drunk and high, and then we get sweaty and naked wrestle with each other. My name is Tony Podesta, and this is how I did things in my high school years. Oh. Better yet, why don't you all strip and we'll have a real tournament. Just like on TV. Why you're dead. Now here we have it, folks, the greatest free-for-all and championship wrestling. Right here and Downtown Partyville. <laughs> this is so fucking weird. I'm trying to... <laughs> you think one of these kids would be like, huh, why does Tony keep trying to get us naked and wrestle in his living room and videotape it? Probably nothing. Probably nothing weird with that. Let's just get naked and wrestle. It's natural. <laughs> Perfect. Now... Here comes the defending champion. Oh no, Tony! Tony, no! What are you doing? Who says that? Even a pedophile wouldn't say something that stupid. Here comes... <laughs> he takes his pants off when he does it. Here comes the defending champion. Unzips. Now, here comes the defending champion. I'm going to beat your pants off, Carlos, so get them off. <laughs> I'm going to get your pants off, Carlos. I'm the defending champion. And this is my title belt. Well, I'm not really wearing a belt. 
Hey! My underwear! <laughs> it's another ass slap! What are you doing? Be cool, man. <laughs> so, uh, what happened to you last night? Um, it was getting late. I had to go home. Well, uh, I got some good news. Oh, yeah? The club voted. They decided to let you join. Oh, great. I thought you'd be excited. Well, what happened after I left? Uh, the usual. We A lot of anal sex and crying. You know, it's usual at Tony's house. <laughs> I like every single one of these molestation stories that the Boy Scouts have put together in this video has involved an ass slap. It's like, it's, this is what they envision child molestation looks like. Well, clearly the pedophile starts by slapping the asses of all the young boys he can get his hands on before, before actually molesting them. I wrestled, everyone ends up naked. And then we watched the video Tony made. No big deal, just a good time. Yeah, it really sounds like it. But there's just one more thing you have to do to become a member. Well, what was that? I had to swear that I wouldn't tell a soul. Only the club members knew what went on. He said, if their secret ever got out, they'd all get in a big trouble. So what did you do? I didn't know what to do. If I didn't join, they'd call me a chicken. Oh, for sure. I wouldn't have to spoil their fun. I just didn't want any part of it. So why didn't this guy speak to you? Because I decided to talk. At first to my dad. I wish my dad were around to talk to. My dad was around, but he wasn't listening. He called me a fag and said I wanted it. Then he hit me with his belt for an hour and a half. I never told dad about what happened to Tony's after that. It's a real, it's a real rough household, what can I say? Yes? Dad, are you busy? Uh, matter of fact, I am. Can it wait? Yeah, sure. Dad? Yes, son? I need to talk to you. Sure. What's on your mind? Well, there's this club, you see. All guys. That I really wanted to belong to for a long time. And finally, last week, they, uh, they asked me to join. <laughs> well, hey. That's great. Congratulations. Congratulations on getting molested, son. Here's a big high five from your dad. But dad, they do some really weird stuff. You know, that uh, reminds me of the fraternity I belong to in college. A lot of guys I know think it's great. But it just doesn't feel right. You know what I mean? Sure was a lot of fun. Boy, nothing's better than getting molested, son. <laughs> Why don't you go, go back to your clubhouse and get a, raped a little bit more? Reminds me of my fraternity days. Don't ever tell anyone else. Just go along with it. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Thanks for listening. No. <laughs> um, anytime. Oh, sure, Gladys. Well, let me see. Oh, I can't believe it's the first of the month already. Yeah, the 10th will be fine. Okay. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Hi, honey. Mom, you have a minute? Of course. Just let me get the chicken in the oven, okay? Now, what's up? You told your mom? I can't believe it. Yeah, I'll never forget that day. I bet. Did she get hysterical? No, she did get my dad's attention, though. And then we went to the police station. Busy place, huh? Yeah. A lot of people think that sexual molestation only happens to girls. But what really happens is that boys may be more reluctant to report, especially if the molester is a man. They're afraid that other... <laughs> that, 
a that kind of felt like a backhanded compliment. <laughs> I don't even know what you'd call that. A subtle insult? Well, I hear what you're saying, Timmy. You've been brutally molested. You know, a lot of people think it only happens to little girls. Tiny little bitchy girls. Are you a little bitchy girl, Timmy? I'm not sure. It's hard to tell from here. But you were molested, and we know that that only happens to little girls. Others might think that they're homosexuals. I'm not. Are you a fag, Timmy? Are you a little girl or are you a fag, Timmy? It's got to be one of the two. You've been molested. At least, I don't think I am. I wouldn't worry about it if I were you. This doesn't mean that you or any of the other boys are homosexuals. We've had similar cases. Oh boy, you can, you can tell this was made in the 80s. Could you imagine a PSA saying that today? It's okay, Timmy. I understand you've been raped, but don't worry. It doesn't mean you're gay. Those fucking homosexuals, you're not one of them. Okay, champ? It's all right. We'll pray about it. We'll pray that you're not a queer. Timmy. <laughs> they would be crucified. The scouts would be crucified for having that line in today. Older boys taking advantage of younger ones. Maybe bigger kids using smaller ones. Usually some type of picture taking may be going on. The peer pressure of belonging to a group makes kids even more vulnerable to being sexually abused. This is especially true in initiations that may involve sexual activity. Remember, if kids are doing something you don't like or you know is wrong, you don't want them for your friends. I appreciate you coming in and reporting what happened. It wasn't easy. We will have to deal with Tony. But as far as the other boys on this list, you have my word that none of them will get into trouble. So now what happens? We get a search warrant so we can search the meeting place. But don't you worry. You did the right thing. So, did you guys get into trouble? No, the policeman was right. They did find the videotape, so... What did Tony say? You know, Doctor, I, I don't get it. First the policeman, now you. What are you guys blaming me for? You, you, you act like it's all my fault. Tony, let's run this down. You found a bunch of younger boys. You bought their loyalty with money and gifts. You waited until you could have your secret club meetings. You got the club members high on drugs and booze and then took advantage of them when their defenses were down. And on top of that, you videotaped the whole affair. Whose responsibility is it? But they wanted it. <laughs> you don't understand, Doctor. Yeah, I got those little kids high as a kite. I got him shit-faced drunk, brought him back to my sex dungeon, stripped him naked, and filmed them for my pleasure while they wrestled. But they, they seduced me, doctor. They seduced me. Now, I got a friend, all right? He asked this kid to clean out his attic, and that little fucker rubbed him up with oil and butter and reported him. I'm not going down like that, all right? These kids aren't going to fuck me over like Jamal did, all right? They asked for it. Oh, they wanted to be sexually abused. Yeah, I mean, no, you're putting words in my mouth. And another thing, Tony. You were counting on the other members of the club to keep it all secret. So? So you are the older person. It was you who should have been responsible for them, instead of setting them up for abuse. It was so easy. What? <laughs> Tony, Tony, you're not helping your case here. After the doctor accuses you of molesting children, you probably shouldn't utter the phrase, it was so easy. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing, Tony? They just fell for it. Exactly. That is the point. But that doesn't make it my fault. You are wrong, Tony. I wish someone like you had told me that when I was 14. You are wrong. Is that when this all started? Yeah. It's strange, huh? But there was my coach when I was about nine. I don't know why, but this is the first time I've ever told anyone ab about him. No, that's not unusual. Unfortunately, a lot of child molesters were sexually abused as children and start their careers when they reach adolescence. You're the victim here, Tony. <laughs> I love this. He's sitting at a fucking, I, I guess this is part of the police investigation. 
Hey, listen, doctor. It wasn't my fault, but you know what? It was so easy. It was so easy. I gave them G.I. Joes and they did anything I asked. So easy, doctor, but not my fault. Some career. Well, you've come a long way since our first session. It's still hard for me to accept responsibility for what's happened. Why is that? Because it means admitting to myself that I have a problem. Well, Tony, we're here to help with that problem. It's not a big deal, Tony. Sometimes to make an omelet, you gotta break some eggs. But you feel bad about it, so we're just gonna call it even. All right, champ? Since you feel so bad about this, you just you go on home. You know what? Don't even worry about jail. You feel bad, champ. And that's the first step to recovery. Here, would you like a lollipop? Have a lollipop, Tony. Doesn't Bobby understand that by telling, you actually helped him? Maybe someday he will. <laughs> yeah. Because even Tony recognizes now what was going on. Yeah, you know, I used to think molesters were just dirty old men. They can be anybody. Yeah. You got that right. Hey, you guys want to come see my new telescope? Sure. Yeah. It's really neat. I'm Don't trust that fucking kid. All right, you guys have taken a really weird walk home. And every one of you has had a molestation story. And now he wants to bring you to his room to look at his telescope. Don't do it. It's not a normal telescope. It expands and gets longer, but it's not for looking at the stars. Fucking run. I mean, all of a sudden you can see things you never saw before. Come on. Let's go. I've always wanted a telescope. Last night we saw Jupiter. From far out. What's this for? Oh, well, see, this is for focusing. Hi, boys. Hi, Mom. Uh, hello, Mrs. Turner. Hi. My students are begging for a chance to eyeball your new toy. May I show and tell it tomorrow? Well, sure you can, Mom, but just be careful with it. It's a deal. Say, I saw you boys walking over on Elm Street. Why didn't you pick us up? Well, I honked, but nobody noticed. What were you talking about? You know, the normal stuff, getting raped. Typical after-school conversation, Mom. We've all been brutally raped. That's what we were talking about. I've been violated in my asshole, Mom, and you let it happen. The telescope isn't going to make that go away. Child molesters. Oh, that's pretty heavy. Holy shit, he actually told her that! <laughs> Stuff. I don't know if I'd recognize one if I saw one. Well, that's just it. I mean, a child molester can be anyone. The important thing is to recognize situations that are risky. Say, like an adult or an older kid being secretive about sex making you feel uncomfortable by touching them places where they shouldn't so what does a kid do if this happens they should do whatever they can to resist make a scene because when a kid resists most of these guys will back off that's right you have the right to resist you certainly do and then what well then you have to report it even when it's a friend or someone in the family because they can get help and if you don't tell then other kids may get hurt you're absolutely right. The three R's. I mean the three R's of protection. Recognize, resist, and report. Hey, you're right. The three R's of protection. Sounds like something I need to share with my class. <laughs> Talk about a show and tell. I don't know if kindergartners need to hear these stories. That's the class mom teaches. Is kindergarten. She's gonna, she's gonna bring the three boys in to explain if they get slapped on the ass to run. And speaking of telling, Dan... It's important that you know you can tell me anything. I know, Mom. See you later, guys. Bye. No, you're not alone in this world. Wow. That was, uh, that was one hell of a fucking PSA from the Boy Scouts. I <laughs> just... Oh. Oh, what are the odds? What are the odds that happened to each and every one of them? All right, let me find this video. It might take me a few minutes. I don't know if I saved it. Or bookmarked it. I, I, I don't know. But it does exist. I will find it. Somebody linked it to me on Twitter a while back. And I, I couldn't stop laughing because it's so ridiculous. Alright, let me see if I can find this. There's all the Daniel Moore stuff. Alright. Uh, just give me a moment, chat. Talk amongst yourselves. Discuss the lessons you've learned in today's video. Oh, where?
where did I put this fucking video? Ah, uh, no, 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 no. Um, uh, you know what? <laughs> Just I'll try that as a search term. Oh, it's a 30-minute video, too. I, I need to find this. You have to watch it. It's so fucking retarded. It's... <laughs> okay. All right. Uh... Oh, I found it. Holy shit. I found it. Are you guys ready? <laughs> Are you guys ready to watch this? All right. That's the name of it. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Here we go. We We got it. We got it. Oh my god, the whole thing is up too. You thought I was you thought I was full of shit. This movie is about a child molesting his father. It's called The Strange Thing About the Johnsons. And it is a wild story that involves <laughs> involves a father being brutally raped and crying. And then I think he commits suicide and then the mother kills him. A spoiler alert. So <laughs> <laughs> Let's watch this shit. You know, other side of the story. These are the these are the predators that Chris Hansen doesn't focus on. All right. Uh, let me just make sure I got everything set up. Okay. Good. All right. Oh boy, chat. We've we've deviated from what we were originally going to watch. I know it was going to be a a fun little visit into Ted Jesus Christ God and some televangelists on public access. Uh, but somebody super chat. You know what? Actually. There were a few super chats that went through. Let me read those real quick. Get them out of the way here. And then we'll go into the strange thing about the Johnsons. All right. One second. I got to I, I gotta make that money. Active Banana. Sup, Jim? Love your stuff? Just had a quick question. When you talk about Kemet, why does your woke character have a Portuguese flag on its turban? I, I can't explain the lore to you, white boy. If you don't understand... <laughs> Why he has a Portuguese flag on his turban? I can't help you. All right, go eat some mayonnaise or something. Listen to country music. All right, it's too much for you. Senator Hitler. So we learned that Daddy uh, taught Donga how to wrestle. How sweet. Also, SBCC live tomorrow at 1.11 p.m. Eastern. Uh, yeah, I, let me throw out a plug here for SBCC. Uh, great fucking stream. Really funny shit. He will be live tomorrow at 1.11 p.m. Eastern. Pastor Bates. Tony says, first, first rule of Fight Club is everyone gets naked. Joey, Jojo 89. I'm surprised this movie doesn't talk about female teachers or female prison guards. Molesting boys since that's a big ec er, epidemic too. Thinking emoji. From Cherry of the SS. Everyone seems to wonder who I really am, so I'll say it now. I'm really Jade. Jim, you left the basement unlocked. Get better OPSEC. New Guardian. Send all the boys to military school. Israel will have an army of intersectional child soldiers with pristine poopers. From Crackbot, they had to pick the most effeminate police officer, too. Ocean Redux, lol, Jim, what the fuck are we watching? We were watching a PSA put together by the Boy Scouts in 1989 about what, about what to do if Tony Podesta takes you to his house. From Gopnik, Jim, I know your game. You're teaching us how to avoid grooming so nobody else gets into your supply. ZT, Think we'll see Mandar in the video. From 666-6666, Santi's live in 5, Senator Hedla. Just to be clear, this video is SPCC playing a Ted-like character named Cheeto. Uh, we'll take a look at that maybe later on. See Thomas the Peasant. We need more glow-in-the-dark CIA niggers. Again from 6666, Alex live in 5, Joey Jojo 89 the Raccoon City mayor's daughter has a fat ass. I like the new Resident Evil 2 DLC and we're caught up. Let us go into the strange thing about the Johnsons. I hope you're ready for this amazing fucking video chat. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, boy. Here we go.
Uh, if you're saying you're having issues with the sound, uh, it's playing. It's just very low. Uh, all right, well, I guess we have to end the stream then. If you're not hearing any sound, there's nothing I can do. It's playing through. I'm hearing the audio fine. I, I guess we got to quit. We'll have to, we'll have to continue another time. Sorry, chat. Sorry. We'll, we'll do it tomorrow, maybe. I guess. There's no sound coming through. Nothing I can do. Nothing I can do. No sound. Can't hear. All, uh, all terrible. All terrible. I don't know what to tell you. If you can't hear the video, I guess we'll have to watch it another time. I'll give you, I will give you the, I guess the surprise reveal. Uh, father, son's, son is masturbating in his room. Father catches him. Uh, this is how, <laughs> this is how you know where it's going to go. All right. I'll just, I'll give you this. The, the dad gives him a talking to and says, don't be embarrassed about it. Nothing, nothing to be embarrassed about, son. And then it goes into this. point forward it goes into a very dark place of the son brutally raping his father repeatedly repeatedly raping his father until his father dies a lonely and sad death the dad's giving him a pep talk don't worry about it son nothing to be ashamed about it's totally normal it's totally normal to masturbate and then the kid the kid lays down on the bed opens his hand up and it's a picture of his father half naked and, uh, yeah, and from here it devolves into brutal rape. Uh, brutal, horrific, violent rape of the father by the son. <laughs> I'm sorry the audio is not coming through for you. It, it is very quiet. Maybe that's why it's not working. I could, try, I could try to repair it and we can play it tomorrow, maybe. Maybe that's what we'll do. We'll pick up with this particular video tomorrow. If you want to watch it tonight, though, if you're too intrigued, you know, you have to see what the fuck's going on with this. It's called The Strange Thing About the Johnsons. And the full movie, the whole thing, is up on is up on YouTube. I highly recommend it. It's a fucking bizarre story. Just a bizarre story. Uh, the son is very violent uh, and very sexual with their old dad. I think my favorite scene is <laughs> the father. It's prom night. The dad took his kid to prom, and dad comes home crying, just sobbing. And he runs into the bathroom, and his wife's like, what the fuck's going on? And he just sits rocking back and forth in the shower, sobbing, because the son violently raped the father at prom. So, <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, if you want to check that out, I think this is the only copy that's, uh, that's up, is this one copy. I have no idea who the fuck made this. I don't know why this was made. It's so bizarre. I don't know why this was made. I'll read you the little synopsis, though. The Johnsons are an attractive, well-to-do, upper-class uh, family from Sydney. Uh, hus oh, I'm sorry. Sydney, husband and father, is a famous poet known and adored for his kindness and sensitivity. Joan, wife and mother, is a dutiful housewife, obsessive homemaker in the life of every party. Their son, Isaiah, is a charismatic young man who has just gotten married to an equally appealing young woman. In fact, there's only one thing that separates the Johnsons from their charming friends and neighbors. Isaiah the son has been molesting Sidney the father since he was 12 years old. And what's more, 
Sidney has written a memoir that chronicles in great detail the ins and outs of the unseemly father-son relationship. Will the manuscript ever see the light of day? Or will young Isaiah have a thing or two to say about it? The strange thing about the Johnsons is a dark domestic melodrama, which asks, what if? And then for some reason, comes up with an answer. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, yeah, uh, yep, that's uh, Father Raper. Uh, Isaiah is uh, banging daddy. <laughs> it's just, I, it's so fucking surreal. It's so, I don't even know when this came out. This came out 2011, so it's it's like eight years old. It's been up on the internet for a, a whole eight years. Well, good, good job, chat. You completely sidelined me from talking about televangelism. That was my plan for tonight. Jesus Christ, dead. I was going to laugh at goofy fucking public access TV and shit. And we watched a PSA about Boy Scouts getting molested. And then talked about Isaiah raping his father. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to say. You people you people, pick some weird shit to watch. Uh, a little sidetrack, but what are you going to do? I... <laughs> I think that's I think that's good. I streamed for like an hour and a half. I you know fuck it. Uh, that's good enough for today. Uh, thank you for coming out and joining. Again, if you want to watch the movie yourself, it's the strange thing about the Johnsons. Remember, SPCC will be live tomorrow at 1:11 p.m. Eastern. Uh, if you like good prank phone calls, it's a good stream to watch. We will continue with this. I'll try to fix the audio. Uh, download it, fix the audio, and I just play it off my desktop. And we can watch this amazing melodrama about Isaiah preying on his poor, innocent fucking father, Sidney, uh, later on. And also get into Nigerian scammers and televangelism. I've got a whole backlog of shit to look at. Also, good news, by the way. Uh, our, our boy that used to run Sonic Galaxy 3 forums, uh, his shit's been backed up. Somebody actually set up an archival YouTube channel. All his videos are saved. And they also saved all of his stories. So well done. Well done. Uh, Sonic Sonic fandom, the greatest fanfic we've ever read that's ever existed on the internet, blows Sonic you out of the water. Not dead, not disappeared. We know his mom made him take all his shit offline, but it's still up there. People archived everything. Uh, thank you very much to the people that archived it. Also, David Stay, I will, I will get a hold of him uh, and see if that was for real, because we can have him come on and talk about Photon and just talk about his experience in Japan working with those people, doing like the independent film stuff. Like, I think that'd be really cool. So we'll see if we can get him on uh, and do, like, a Photon-themed episode or, you know, like, podcast, whatever. Because I, I really want to know, like, what is it? What, what was it like working with them? Was it filmed mostly in Japan? Did you film it in the U.S.? Uh, you know, behind-the-scenes stuff, what were the Super Sentai guys like? Uh, why did they never pick up a second season? You know, did uh, what did you do after that? Was it right into the independent filmmaking stuff? Uh, and then maybe see if we can figure out, like, who owns the rights to Photon, and if they will ever release that on, like, DVD or something. Because that really... I would buy that. If somebody could remaster it and put it up, even at, like, just a semi-decent quality, I would totally buy a fucking Photon DVD. So, we'll, we'll see about that. Uh, it's all speculation. I don't know if that'll happen. Uh, either way, enjoy your weekend. Have a good Saturday and Sunday. Uh, for those that watch my videos and stuff, I should have something up this weekend. Be back to streaming normally uh, this Monday. Uh, aside from that, uh, take it easy. Let me find an outro song to play. What are we gonna, what are we gonna play here? What's a good, what's a good outro? So, you know what? We're gonna, since Sonic Galaxy Three and all that shit's been saved, we're gonna go out with a bang. A little, a little classic for everybody there. Uh, take it easy, and I will see you all on Monday. You spin me right round, baby, right round like a record, baby, right round, round, round. You spin me right round, baby, right round like a record, baby, right round, round, round. You spin me right round, baby, right round like a record, baby, right round, round, round. You spin me right round, baby, right round like a record, baby, right round, round, round. I want your love. I want your